Okay, now that we have seen the different types of uh, you know, these selection methods, we'll, let's go to the last one, which is the embedded method, okay, also known as shrink case method. We also call this a regularization regression models, and I'm going to give you uh, what regularization is. One video I have made on regularization. If you want to learn more about regularization, it's there in this video in the description section. Like, uh, so it's a technique that regularizes the estimates or it shrinks the coefficients to zero. So you have beta coefficients, right? These beta coefficients will be very close to zero or either equal to zero sometimes. And that actually, whenever it's equal to zero, then that variable is as good as not present in the model or that variable is considered to be not part of the model. So that's one type of selection method, right? Or rejection method, rather. So how does uh, how does uh, we uh, how, how do we do uh, shrinkage or regularization? So there is a slight change to the estimation process. So in the estimation, in the linear uh, regression estimation, or any regression estimation, when you're using least square estimation, you are basically minimizing the root uh, the RSS, right? The residual sum of squares. And how do you compute the residual sum of square? It's the summation of sum of 1 equal to 1 to n, yi, which is target, minus beta naught minus summation of j equal to 1 to p, where p is the number of predictors, beta i x i j. So this is the set of features or set of uh, predictors. These are estimates, beta naught and beta i are the uh, estimates, right? And this is how you compute your RSS, root mean square error. In embedded method, you just add another term. So this is the term that we are adding to the RSS. So RSS is computed like this in normal uh, least square estimation. In shrinkage method, to the RSS, we add an, another term and then minimize. And then we minimize the whole thing. Okay. Now what is the idea behind this? Well, the idea is that to ensure that the beta values get uh, low value. So beta should get low value. And what is the benefit of it? Because what happens is that some unimportant variables which are having very high impact on your target variable should get low value so that, you know, it uh, gives a better prediction. Okay. And there are basically two types of uh, uh, shrinkage method, lasso and reach. Um, so lasso is the one, so this is reach method, this is called the one that we have seen reach. In lasso, we just do a slight change. We just add RSS and to that we add this term. So instead of, you know, squaring the beta, summation of beta, we have, we have you know, we have taken the uh, summation of square of beta values. So here we have taken the modulus of that, modulus of betas. Okay. Now we are minimizing this. Minimizing RSS plus lambda and uh, the summation of summation of uh, sorry modulus of uh, betas. So this is the difference. Here it's modulus and there it is uh, square of uh, the parameters or the coefficients. This fundamental difference between that. Okay. And what is lambda? It's called uh, tuning parameters and we'll we'll talk about it later. Okay. So uh, in last show. So the earlier one was, uh, you know, reach where, you know, your uh, betas will tend to be zero, but will not exactly be zero. Whereas in lasso here, some of the coefficients, some of the betas will be zero, exactly zero. So when the coefficient is zero, that variables with which this coefficient is associated is actually uh, getting dropped from the model. And that's the selection method, right? That's how we reject some of the variables. So we reject variables which have, you know, beta is equal to zero. And it's automatic. You don't have to do it. Like in the previous case, in subset selection, we had to run it. We had to check uh, the BIC plot. We had to, uh, you know, check the R square, do the cross validation and so on. Here, we don't have to do anything of anything. So in the estimation procedure itself, we found some of the beta values to be zero by changing the estimation function or the cost function. So this cost function now is changed and it automatically takes care of the variable reduction. Okay. So given that beta values becomes zero, lasso is considered to be a variable selection, not reach, 
although reads also is some time considered to be uh, very helpful but from a variable selection point of view lasso is actually very useful so beta is zero for unimportant variable so that's the idea here now uh, important thing to remember is choosing the tuning parameter now tuning parameter is something that helps you in the estimation process and you can have several tuning parameters you can have large set of tuning parameters okay so what usually you do in while you know uh, building the model is that you choose uh, you you have a grid let's say you know your uh, beta so your lambda lies between 0 0.001 and uh, to let's say 100 so so for every interval of 0 0 1 you choose a lambda value so this is a grid and for every lambda value this estimation process will happen and then it will internally do the cross validation and will find it out for us that for which lambda we are going to have the minimum of the cost function or the minimum of the uh, this particular value rss plus you know summation of this beta and so on right so it's a slightly computationally intensive process because for these many uh, lambda values you will have separate uh, you know uh, optimization happening so uh, slightly uh, computationally intensive but finally you will get the model which uh, has the uh, tuning parameter giving you the best model and that's done through cross validation and again it's good to do with uh, test data not with the training data so automatically you get for the test data but you know you have to replicate that with sorry training data you have to replicate that with the test data finally uh, uh, we'll see the difference between dimension direction with feature selection now we have learned the different types of feature selection right how do you select the best set of features okay sometimes we have you can get it automatically sometimes you can do it univariate use univariate analysis and sometimes with uh, you know selection method like subset selection or by uh, stepwise selection right so these are the four things that we learned now some people confuse that dimension direction is also very similar to feature selection dimension direction is actually different in dimension reduction, you do not drop any variable, okay, or you do not select the variable out of the set of variables. You actually combine. Let's say you have, you know, let's say you have four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. So principal component analysis is one of the dimension reduction uh, reduction variable. There could be other dimension reduction with you know uh, uh, methods like your uh, factor analysis and so on so using pca or principal component analysis you can actually combine or you can combine these four features in such a way that it uh, reduces to uh, a smaller set of features okay so here by combining x1 x2 x3 x4 we could find two different variables called g1 and g2 so combining four independent variables or four features we could found two different independent variables or two different features j1 and g2 uh, which together retains the uh, prediction power of all four variables so the prediction power of x1 x2 x3 x4 combiningly is retained by xz g1 and g2 but they are two different variables so this is a linear combination of some of these variables and g2 is also linear combination of some of these variables so we're combining variables to find principal components okay but we are not dropping x1 and then going ahead with x2 x3 x3 so that's not happening that's what happens in feature selection whereas in dimension direction you combine variables to come up with composite variables or two completely different variables so these are g1 and g2 are composite variables which are some sort of a linear combination of x1 x2 x3 and x4 and then these variables retain the uh, prediction ability of the initial variables but you know the bad thing is that you can no more interpret the original variable because you know that's now combined together with some sort of a linear combination but from a uh, predictive model point of view uh, it, it actually does a good job because it reduces the number of uh, features finally but not through feature selection 
but through dimension direction because we are bringing down by combining features here okay so that's the difference basic difference here thank you so much and please subscribe to us